So this is chapter 20 homework. Um, it is something that uh, the problems are fairly challenging. We went through some of these in class. I'm going to take a look at this. So you can take a look at some of the answers here. Notice I screwed up on part of 33 because I forgot the formula. It's not one that I had used before in algebra-based physics. It's raining a lot outside and I am in a portable at Harmon Middle School. Um, doing something a little bit different right now. So 51 and then 68. All right, so now let's go back to the top, and I'll talk about these for a few minutes. Hopefully, this will help. So first of all, uh, problem number seven. If you've got this many charges for two spheres, it's half that many per sphere. You just need to convert that from charges to coulombs. So that's the conversion factor, or you could have multiplied it by 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs per charge would have gotten you the same answer. 14 is simply using um, the Coulomb's law formula for force, but we're rearranging it to solve for distance. 2.6 centimeters or 0.026 meters. Problem 23, I thought this was slick, slick, slick. It's amazing what physics exists in the natural world um, that we've just recently, in the past 10 or 20 years, been able to figure out. And I'm sure there's a lot more out there. For example, hammerhead sharks and dolphins and many other aquatic animals use electric fields to sense their prey and orient themselves. So this is the formula we used to figure out electric field at a distance from a point source. It was 6.75 newtons per coulomb for the first flower that had not been pollinated. Um, pardon me, maybe that had been pollinated, I guess, and the other one was down here. That's a difference of 2.25 newtons per coulomb that is greater than the sensitivity of the bee, so they could detect which one had been recently pollinated. <coughs> Problem 29, we're looking for the electric field at this point in space. We're using the general formula again um, for this, and actually it says F equals KQ over R squared. That is incorrect. I'm going to edit that. It should say E, E, electric field, and I make that larger, and we're going to do this. Yeah, it sort of covers it up. Okay. Um, and that equals, uh, we went over this one in class. So basically we have to recognize that the electric fields caused by the two charges will be pointing in different directions. Some part, the horizontal part of that, those electric fields will add up vectorally and the vertical parts will cancel out. So the first thing I did is get the electric field at that distance. The distance from either of these charges is 7.1 centimeters. So I use that, and that was 1,800 newtons per coulomb was the field strength from either one of the charges. To figure out the horizontal components, because those are the ones that add up, I take the field strength from either one of the charges multiplied by the cosine of 45 to get the horizontal component, multiplied by 2 because both charges, Q2 and Q1, have a horizontal component which adds up. And so that gets me a total of 2,550 newtons per coulomb to the right. And notice I do not need a charge at this point to have a field at this point. Just like how we don't need mass at a location to have a gravitational field caused by a different mass at that location. For 33, <coughs> as I said, I'd forgotten this formula. I knew it was Q over A, but I'd forgotten that the E sub 0 uh, was in the bottom. So it's charge per area, and then divided by that constant. So looking at that, that's how I get the charge on either of the um, capacitor plates. I want to check this real quick. Make sure I'm thinking about the right problem. 
Yep, there's the problem. The area you get. We're doing four centimeters, 0.04 meters times 0.04 meters. Number 35. Um, we went over this, I believe, in class also. So I drew a little picture. This is one of the um, circles. This is another one of the circles I'm drawing sideways. So if this negatively charged mass is in between them and it's hovering, means the top part has to be positive, the bottom part has to be negative. It means the electric force upward is balanced by the gravitational force downward. So to calculate that, First I get my gravitational force, and therefore I know the electric force must be the same magnitude. Since E equals F over Q, F equals E times Q. So I can get my electric field strength, which is a 1.6 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. And now I plug that into the formula for a capacitor. That's how I get the charge per plate. Odd that both of these are 1.63 as the coefficient, but that's the way it was. For number 37, this is a picture. Here's the ground. The charges build up on the high points because they're attracted to the negatives. The electric field strength is strongest here, so lightning is greatest to strike there. Stay off the hilltop. <clears throat> 51, two one gram objects, two centimeters apart. Said the net force between them is 0.225 newtons. They're equal in strength. So I'm going to use Coulomb's law formula. It's really Q squared here because it says each Q is the same magnitude, so Q1 times Q2. And that comes out to be 100 nanocoulombs, or 1 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs. Number 68 we did in class. I want to thank Noah Kenyon for helping me out with that. So essentially here, we need to think about that the gravitational force on these objects is vertical. The Horizontal force is electrical, and that would be repulsive. So the ratio of those, electric to gravitational, is horizontal to vertical. And since we knew the angle from vertical was 20 degrees, we can plug that into a trig equation. The gravitational force is up here using m times g. So again, we can get the gravitational force to help us understand the electric force, which was 0.0107 newtons. So in this case then, we can also use trig and the known length of these strings to determine the distance between these two charges. I get 0.034 meters from this sphere to the middle. There's two spheres, so that's another 0.034 meters. So it comes up to 0.68 meters is the distance between the charges. Now I can use this formula, which this looks just hideous here. I'll do a r squared. So something like that. That's good. And hopefully that'll work. Hello. Could you have a better day? Yeah, that's pretty. Really Look how nice and dry that is. I'm impressed. I didn't get mine counted. That's okay. Say so we can do that. Like I said, do one of those days I come out and have time and I did. Yep, I get it. I appreciate you dropping them off. Thank you so much.